Hi, guys. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Goops. Hi, everyone. For Advocates the Podcast, and I'm Michelle here with Razlan Hadri and Gopal Srinivasan. Um, we are wrapping up season one. We've just done Jonathan Crow two weeks ago, and we've opened up, uh, I think, on IG for people to come and ask questions. So let's jump right into it. Of course, my questions first, yeah? So, guys, <laughs> um, Gopal, perhaps you can take this. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about how this all started? Um, yeah, well, I've said it a few times, um, and it was just, it was boredom, wasn't it? Um, and last year's complete mm. lockdown. Um, and, you know, I was keen to explore together with Raz and, and, and you, um, how advocates become advocates. And that's how we started. And it was just really lucky because of lockdowns across the world. Uh, and we managed to get in touch with some really, really good people, really quality advocates. And, um, they spent their time with us. So yeah, that's, that's what happened. Yeah, we've been really lucky. Um, Russ, I, I think some people have asked about um, the difficulties we faced in, in producing this thing. Um, can you tell them a bit about it? Well, I think the biggest challenge was getting the advocates that uh, we want to talk to uh, and getting the type of advocates, I suppose, listeners who want to listen to. Uh, that was the biggest challenge. Of course, there are always technical issues because, uh, well, I don't know about you, but um, as the oldest here, technology is not exactly my strong suit. <laughs> uh, I can argue a case um, till the cow comes home, but I certainly needed a lot of help on the technical aspects, as you well know. So that was the biggest challenge for me, actually, <laughs> to be frank. Um, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Go far. A uh, biggest challenge for me? Yes, yes. Um, well, yeah, I think Raz is right. I think that the technology did present its its challenges. Um, and But I, I, I think what the easiest part of the process was getting these advocates to speak to us. I, I couldn't believe how lucky we were. Um, mm. And if you ask me what the biggest challenge was, it was after recording the first two episodes, I thought to myself, Mm, yeah, has this thing got legs? Because you know every advocate's going to tell us the same thing. But my word, it's just that wasn't the case, was it? Uh, every advocate has got a different way of approaching it, different way of speaking about uh, the way they work, about their lives. Um, so that was really, really, I think, uh, rewarding uh, for me. Uh, uh, actually, I, if I, I can add to that, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it just reminds me as well because. Uh, remember, originally, all three of us thought that it, it should be, what, half an hour, 45 minutes right. per episode? Yes, yes, yes. But once we interviewed them and they open up... Uh -huh. uh, Don't want to stop, right? It's so interesting. Right. Obviously, uh, I think Jonathan Crowe ha must have the last word here because... No, no, no. Eastern Raja actually must have the last word here because I think I remember him telling us he's so happy to talk to us. But of course, then again, barristers love to talk about themselves. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but but the thing is, what they what the stories they shared, their experience and their techniques, particularly, I mean, they were so generous, you know. At the end of the day, that's why the episode then went on. Some of them were an hour plus. We just didn't know which parts to leave out, isn't it? That's right. Mm. Exactly right. Exactly so right. So on that note, yeah, um, would you guys be able to tell our listeners which was your favorite moment or which are the favorite parts of you know the episodes? Maybe a certain segment or what do you like best? Oops. Um, I tell you a standout moment for me uh, was Davinder Singh. Um, he, the humility of the man just, mm -hmm. it, it just stood out. It was just so sharply colored. Um, and I was fascinated and intrigued by how he spoke about cross-examination and what he said about it being a dialogue between him and the judge. And I never saw that. I never saw it in that way. You know, uh, 26 years, 27 years at the bar myself. I never saw it that way. Um, so, yeah, for me, that was just a, a standout moment. Ah, uh, and, and Russ? Um, Johan Kriegler tearing up, I mean, basically crying mm. when describing why he, as a white privileged Africana, decided to defend uh, black South Africans during the time of apartheid and the price he and his family had to pay. And of course, of course, Kriegler 
split this down because obviously the price that he had to pay can't be compared to the price his client paid. But nevertheless, being ostracized by a majority of his community, by his own church, I mean, that, that must take something, you know. And and mm. he did it and he said he would do it again. And, and, and I thought, you know, that's humanity, isn't it? You know, and and there are so many law jokes about lawyers being mm. money grabbing, you know, and all that. And but if you hear Krigler talk, you know ultimately uh, this is what it's all about, right? This is what you know uh, upholding the law means, actually. It's the people. What about you, Michelle? What stood out for you? Well, I, I think I I won't pick one person. I I think. It just came across to me. It's very, very uh, pleasantly surprising that they were all so human, you know, because we only know them by their reputation. And obviously, they're all brilliant, top advocates, very good at what they do. Just don't know the person. And they all have such interesting stories. They all had struggles. Oh, I love knowing that. Yeah. Okay, so we move on. Um, that's what we enjoyed most. And Gopal, I think I, I'm just going to latch on to what you said. You said you've learned, you know, how Davinda gave um, some insight into cross-examination. Russ, did you learn anything uh, practical or technical that you now adopt and apply in your practice? Oh, yes, for sure. Uh, number one, that, that Davinda Singh thing really, really worked in a couple of trials that I subsequently did. I actually consciously, when it comes to the question that I really I want the judge to listen to, I actually stop looking at the witness and look at the judge, actually. <laughs> I, I literally, I literally, I to, the, to the absolute literal level, okay, this is a conversation between me and the judge. I'm just going to ignore the witness and just talk to the judge. Uh, directly, but the other thing that that I learned also was uh, actually from from Alan Dershowitz actually, which is uh, which was the you know science you know uh, in, involved um, because remember Dershowitz said he was known as the professor of law and something and something yeah, and you know in some of the areas which I practice in like you know technical areas like medical negligence and all that you actually really need to go to the extra mile and really understand that particular area and and or once you do that actually and you can talk with some authority you'll be surprised uh that even the so-called experts can be rattled you know if you really really prepare yourself really really well mm, and gopal do you have anything to add to a bit apart from javinder's cross-examination insight you know i i think um i became a better advocate after every interview. Uh, every single one of the 10 just dropped one nugget that I learned mm. uh, and, I, and I took on, um, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I can't point to one thing and go, that's, that's how it improved me. But every single episode um, made me a better advocate, I think. Right. Um, all right, so now we'll talk a little bit about season two. Uh, everyone, it's coming out soon. Um, I think mid August is the roughly the time we'll start releasing. Um, so, Raslan, can you tell our audience a little bit about what we can expect, not just in season two, but maybe in the future seasons where we're headed? Well, uh, we are not on a break. <laughs> uh, we are working very, very hard. Our producer, particularly uh, Dave, is working extremely hard uh, uh, trying to get people on board. And we had some really cracking fellas saying yes to being interviewed. Um, um, if I can share some names or drop some names, I apologize for doing it. But hey, you know, if I can't drop names on my own show, then when can I drop names, right? <laughs> so we have Lord, we have Lord Panic QC. Uh, the, uh, the advocate who argued Brexit. Uh, we have Jonathan Sumption QC as well. And from Malaysia, we have the legendary VC George, among others. Um, and we've, we've started to interview, we've interviewed these people and we've got other names coming up. Um, the, and aside from, you know, star advocates, I suppose, we are looking at um, possibly interviewing up and coming lawyers as well. We are also looking at having a apart from just a pure uh, vid uh, sorry audio uh, version of the show 
we like to maybe you like to see our mugs on our, uh, uh, and <laughs> we, <laughs> like this like this and, <laughs> yeah and apparently i i i've been advised by the much younger people behind the team that um uh, youtube and all these places are the place to be lah. <laughs> okay oh um, good um, um, okay from victorian times Raz. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as I enjoyed the 60s, we didn't know who the Beatles were, right? That's Raslan Hadwila. Oh yeah, yeah. Moving on, guys. Moving on. Yeah. Moving on. Other days as well, we've got we've got some uh, some fantastic advocates from you know from Hong Kong. It's all very exciting. Uh, as well, uh, for for season two, and yeah, it's 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 gonna be a cracking lineup. Mm -hmm. Season two onwards. Okay. Um. Now, in the interim period, we've got an internship program plan. Um, Gopal, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about that? Sure. So um, we've got top firms, six top firms in Malaysia. Uh, some of them were our our guests um, for season one. Uh, one of them is Ambika Srinivasan. And uh, we're going to be launching an internship competition. And um, that means that there are six places to be won for internships in top in, in these top firms. Uh, and what we hope we, you know, we've, we've managed to squeeze out of these firms is that if you do join them for this internship, you won't be placed under some sort of legal assistant. You will spend the two weeks with um, you know, the top advocates from that practice. Uh, so they've been very, very kind, these six firms. Um, and um, yeah, so we're going to be launching that, I think, next week, right? Uh, Michelle? Yes, soon. Uh, and can I add also, we're not, it's not limited to law students, you know, everyone is welcome to join and apply. Sure, yep. absolutely. Yes, okay. Now, I, I think uh, let's move on to the point of this whole exercise, which is to answer you, the question. This is not the point we're talking to each <laughs> <we never> other. <laughs> no, no, this is the point. <laughs> answer, okay. Yes, now, right. we've got, yes, we've yes, got yeah. really <laughs> good list of questions that uh, you guys have submitted and thank you so much for participating. Um, we said we will pick five for five t-shirts, but we couldn't just pick five. We now have six. So, okay. First question. And this is for us <laughs> by Arkana. Why do advocates wear white and black when the law is never as such and it's always grey? Okay, Arkana, I don't know why uh, 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 this question well i i suppose look i really have no idea why uh, lawyers uh, advocates wear black and white so i i i went to dr google <laughs> dr google according to the legal services india.com says we wear black and white because black is the color of authority and power and uh and it shows our submission of oneself uh white signifies light and goodness now, I don't know about that. Uh, my own theory why we wear black and white is that we spend hell of a lot of time waiting in court. So we that's why we have to dress like waiters. <laughs> so that's my own theory <laughs> why we wear black and white. As okay, regards, right. The sec second part of your command said say the law uh, uh, has got a lot of grey in that. Actually, that's not really true. The law actually is quite clear most of the time. The problem is, not a lot of advocates got the necessary grey matters to persuade the judges that the law is black and white. That's why the law appears to be grey, when well, actually it's not. <gasps> oh, I thanks, hope I don't Russ. get for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second question. This is by Adam. Um, say you were embroiled in a hypothetical legal battle. Who of the season one guests would you want to represent you as counsel and why? Um, Gopal, you want to take this? Um, yeah, look, really interesting question, Adam. Uh, and my answer would be all 10 of them, um, if my insurance could pay for it. <laughs> really, yeah, they would rule it in a different way. Um, you know, you have, you have the courage of, of people like Hina Jelani on one end, and then you've got just the absolute clarity of thinking of Jonathan Crow and Dabinda Singh and the other, and everything in between. So yeah, I get every single one of them. <laughs> okay, thanks, Gopal. Okay, this next question is from Akila, and she's asking, what was the most surprising answer you've received, and why was it surprising? Now, I'm going to answer that first. And 
Because you're going to get the most interesting answer, isn't it? Yeah, well, this is a cruel trick, my friend. This is a cruel trick. Okay. To the answer. Okay. It was when Hina Jelani, um, she was telling her story and her struggle with women's rights and fighting for that. And, and when she came to the point where, where she was telling us about her client who ran away from the marriage and came to her shelter, and the mother was visiting her in Hina's office. And the mother came with an assassin who shot the daughter. I think that, that to me, was the most surprising uh, or, or actually shocking and also very emotional part of the, the whole, I think, 10 interviews. That, that was the most emotional part. I was so taken aback that, that we could exist. I mean, there, there could exist a situation where, where the mother would come and say, I, I want to see my daughter and then bring an assassin and just gun her down. Yeah. So that, that's mine. Uh, Razlan, what's yours? She shot our fox, Raz. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can't possibly top that, quite frankly. I mean, I, I remember that particular... I mean, I remember that particular episode, isn't it, Gopal? I mean, both of us and, and Michelle too, all our jaws, jaws literally literally dropped to the ground. I'm still looking for it. The hell is it? Anyway, <laughs> and you know, he you know, know and, so cool. Yeah, right. Because, you know, all three of us, we do, you know, commercial civil matters and Hina Jalani was just like mm. so matter of the of fact you know well you know people should yeah tomorrow then next day I op I I wake up and, and I go back to practice yeah mm. so mm, um, mm, that, and that fighting was, the fight oh. that's right fighting the good fight I suppose the 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 thing that surprised me not uh, uh I mean not strictly answering the question is the, the fact that um not there are advocates that we interviewed that came from, I suppose, really challenging backgrounds. Uh, I remember Ben Aina telling us uh, that he uh, literally, um, he, he was a, a child of a single parent, you know, and he came from a really, really tough background. He didn't go to the usual Oxbridge route and all that. And now he's one of the top bar uh, criminal barristers in the UK. So I, I mm. thought in terms of the stories where you come from that is really mm. that is really su surprising it surprised also greatly for me that eastern raja qc uh former chairman of the chancery bar association of the uk actually thought that he was an imposter for a while i mean for a long time in practice until he actually became a qc then he thought you know hang on i, I thought I, I think i can do this i, I mean that that was surprising i mean obviously the man has brains the size of mars so i <laughs> It surprised me that he thought of himself of that way, actually. You know, Goops? Yeah, um, you know, for me, and I, and I think, and I want to pick up on dovetail on what Raza said about um, about Eason, because I spoke to him after, you know, season one had was near its conclusion, uh, just before I think Jonathan uh, Jonathan's episode came out. Uh, and he said, he said, you know, what you guys have managed to do is peel the skin of these advocates uh, and he found that the most interesting which is you know that the, the, that sort of personal story so if you ask me the surprises that I, I sort of encountered in season one it's that um, and you know there are two moments that stand out for me Raz one you've already spoken about which is Johan Kriegler um, you know when he he, he really he was so emotional um, speaking about um, about his himself and, and, and why he took the, the route that he did and the other was Davinder as well, which is so emotional about speaking, you know, about about uh, about his father and his mother, uh, and you know, and then Jonathan Crow speaking about his parents, you know, the, the Indiana Jones, Shanghai. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think those were the moments that that really stood out for me, rather than the sort of strictly technical stuff. Yeah, the the human. Aspect, yeah, the yeah? human, the human side, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, now, the fourth question is from Wilson. And Wilson, um, I'm going to paraphrase your question. Uh, and it's, I think, uh, Gopal, right? maybe you can both take it. Now, when interviewing the advocates, did you have any uh, technique you, you utilize in asking the questions that actually came from your training? 
your legal training? Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know what, Wilson, that's a, that's a fabulous question. Um, and the answer is yes. So what, what skill did I deploy that I learned as an advocate? Uh, I think the skill I deployed was uh, how to do examination in chief, uh, which, of course, not many of us get to do very much anymore. Um, but yeah, that was a skill I think that I deployed the most in the sense that uh, I said to myself in my mind, what I wanted to be was like a road sign and nothing more. Um, I just wanted to be able to move the subject from one uh, area to another, but it was about their story. It was never about us as interviewers. So yeah, uh, if you ask me about a skill, it's the examination in chief. Uh, right. um, I, I can't say the same, actually, to be frank. I, I don't think uh, there was any skills that I brought to bear to my interview. The most important uh, uh, um, for me when during doing the interview, the most important thing I told myself all the time after putting up the question, and I and I worked hard at the question because you know the the research and going to before we we actually interview anyone is, is quite uh, back breaking actually. But uh, once so the idea was the question has got to be interesting, uh, and the next part of it is for me actually is this: shut up, Razlan, shut up, let the guest talk <laughs> every time. Uh, after I put the questions yeah. and I just let the, uh, the the advocates speak and sometimes there are pauses and I'll be tempted to intervene because, you know, you cross-examine like that and then I'm just, going, I'm just always catching myself. Shut up, shut the hell up, let him speak, let her speak. <laughs> so that's so any skill. Uh, uh, that's the skill that I got out. Uh, the art of learning to shut up. Oh, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> I'll hold up a sign. <laughs> okay. The fifth question is from Zi Wei. Um, okay. What are your pre-trial rituals before you enter the court for a trial or hearing? Would it be wearing a lucky tie, a lucky watch? Guys? Russ? Um, a couple of years ago, Alexis Silva and I, Alex is a, a, a well-known advocate here in Kuala Lumpur, uh, accidentally switched ropes. Uh, and I took Alex's rope, Alex took mine. I don't know how he did with his rope, but ever since I got his rope, I didn't lose a single case. That was oh. the winningest <laughs> run I had over a period of about four months. Alex realized I got his rope. He's always asking me to line so that we can exchange. I've always found, I, I, I find a thousand and one reasons to avoid all this. Okay? Uh, the, phone, the phone gets back, right? The line is back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. all that, all that. Finally, Alex De Silva called me at the court of appeal. I said, give me back my rope. And Alex De Silva is way really bigger and taller than me. So I had to give him back his rope. And there goes, my, my winning run came to an abrupt, and incredibly tragic end. Uh, so if you're talking to me about superstition, that was it. I don't have any other. Uh, Alex De Silva, can we exchange rope again? Please, la. I got this big matter coming up next week. Please, please, la, please la. <laughs> Go, Paul, any, any, any such uh, um, stories? Okay, I, I don't... There's a famous lawyer in, in, the, in the 70s in Malaysia called uh, VK Palasundrum. Um, and he would decide to fix court dates based upon what his astrologer told him was the for him to argue the case. Um, Mr. Parler Syndrome was also very famous for carrying plastic bags to court with his documents in them. Oh, and of the plastic bag also depended on what the astrologer told him was favorable. Uh, for, him, oh, okay, okay. Uh, for him to carry to court that particular day. Um, I, 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 I'm not sort of saddled with that kind of baggage. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think there are two things that, that, that uh, I do meaningfully, just, just I, I suppose just to set my, my head straight. The first is my robe. Um, so if I'm in open court, the robe I wear was a robe that was given to me by my father 27 years ago when I was called. It still adorns my back. 
I still carry it. I am jealously possessive of it. Um, and I would not wear anything else uh, uh, except that when I'm in, I'm, I'm in open court. The other thing is, um, again, this comes down from my father. He hated the green. So I never wear anything green uh, when I go to court. So only two things. Oh. Yes, sir, Michelle? <laughs> oh, yes. So when I walk into court, uh, I have to step in with my right foot. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I have no, I have no, <laughs> I have no superstitions. <laughs> no, 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 no lucky roll. Definitely tell you, Yeah, I know. Gopal, you want to switch roles? You mean? <laughs> no, we all want Alex to Yeah, we all want Alex to Yeah, six months, I didn't lose a single case. <laughs> Okay, last question. Um, this comes from Fuad, and um, I again will paraphrase this. Um, so he's asked whether, in addition to prominent legal uh, figures, will we also be interviewing uh, younger lawyers? And I think the question is, I like, guess Raz has already dealt with this. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, we are planning something like that. Um, it's in the works. You can only say, stay tuned and wait for it. Yes. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah. And How many years experience are we are we looking at actually? Uh, Ford has asked whether we are asked we are going to speak to people less than five years, but I, I think what we're looking at is maybe about between five to ten years. And I think so. Any of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that fit in that category, uh, please be ready uh, to expect <laughs> a call <laughs> or email from our producer, the ever hardworking Mr. Mark <laughs> Singh. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and now, okay, that takes us that finishes the six questions i think we'll just end this with a great so do you want to announce six thank you i've already i've already named them arcana oh, adam akila wilson Seaway, and what and uh, our team will be in touch with you guys next week in a few days <laughs> to <laughs> to send you the t-shirts um well, yeah congratulations. As I was saying, Yes, thanks, guys. Thanks for the brilliant questions. And those people who've not been selected, thank you too, because it's, it's really difficult. You know, all really good questions. Um, guys, we'll end, I think, with a big thank you to Taylor's, our sponsor, who stuck by us, given us a yeah. chance. Ah, and that's a wrap. Thank you. Yeah. Can I just thank say you. thank you? Thank God. Can I just thanks, say thanks. thank you to the Taylors as well? I mean, they've been fantastic. Uh, you know, they, they supported us when we were absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, zero. They, they've grown with us and we've grown with them. So thank you, Taylors. Uh, and thank you, most importantly, to you guys who listen to us. Um, I hope you're <laughs> going to continue to do that um, through this off season. It's not going to be off. It's going to be a lot of stuff going on. The internship mm. campaign. We're looking at that sort of junior bar. Uh, type mm. thing. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on before we launch uh, season two. So thanks, thanks for supporting us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.